Hey guys, I'm Janet, on occasion, and today I'm playing the Total War Warhammer 2 Battle Replay. So, um, yeah, this is actually from my stream the other day, which I can't publish. It's been processing for over 24 hours. Um, yeah, I think it's broken, so that's kind of annoying. Um, but this is a fun match from it, so uh, I thought I'd share it with you guys. Um, so that way, if you didn't get the chance to see it live, um, you can. So that'll be nice. Um, also, Happy Easter, everybody. Um, you know, that's a thing. So, um, Happy Easter. And, uh, yeah, I'm Dwarves versus, uh, versus the, uh, Lizardmen over here. So this is pretty textbook. I really love Dwarves, um, in this matchup. I just think they work out great. So, uh, here you can see I've got Frontline and Mines with Blasting Charges. Uh, their leadership is going to be up from, uh, all the encouragement, because, uh, Grumbling Guard, they do actually encourage, which is pretty rad. So, um, so my, uh, Longbeards in the back, they're going to be able to support all these guys. The Grumbling Guard are keeping to keep everyone fresh. Um, the Longbeards are great weapons. They're just really sturdy. Um, they've got good armor-piercing damage. You know, they've got fairly good melee attack for a Dwarf, good melee defense, a load of armor, and just so much leadership they just almost never buckle um, they'll pretty much fight to the last man so that's great when you're fighting big scary dinosaurs because you know they aren't immune to psychology but that extra leadership will stop them getting terror outed for a lot longer so uh, I've also got Ungrim Iron Fist defending which is great so he's going to be um, you know he's going to be chopping dinosaurs in twain as he does um, you know very good anti-large bonuses so uh, yeah he can't really duel me with his lords because Ungrim's going to win that also he's unbreakable so he's not going anywhere and uh, so these mines blasting charges the reason for these guys I wanted to go a bit wider and and they're pretty cheap, but also, uh, the Blasting Charges will wreck Skinks. They will do a lot of damage to Skinks, and it also means I've got something cheaper just to chase off Skirmishes, or, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, I've got something cheap to throw at people, but also, they are so cheap, they've got 80 armor, which is still great. Uh, the Blasting Charges will wreck Skinks, and they've got armor piercing. So even if they end up just having to help out, you know, all the Grumbling Guard and stuff, fighting big monsters, they're going to do pretty well. Um, they are going to get pretty battered, but... They can do all right, you know. They're pretty cost-effective in this matchup, so uh, I definitely like that. You know, they'll do all right against Saurus warriors and things. It's pretty fun. So uh, also, I have a rune smith. You know, he's got all the runes, and uh, also the thane here. So he's got the tormentor sword, obviously. Um, that's really going. You know, that's going to help. Uh, but the creme de la creme here, I think, is the iron drakes. The uh, troll hammer torpedoes just destroy big dinosaurs. Um, if a, like a if stegodon runs up, there's a feral stegodon and takes a volley from these guys, it'll almost definitely rampage immediately. So it won't be able to penetrate my back lines because it'll be too busy freaking out just being bogged down by miners. So it's pretty great. So um, absolutely love these guys. And also, they've got a lot of armor. 125 armor. So uh, although they've got small model counts and everything, it is really difficult just to bog them down with cheap units. It'll stop them firing, but the Iron Dregs will probably win in melee in a lot of cases. Um, it's pretty ridiculous. So, um, you know, so they'll certainly last long enough to be able to throw something else at whatever's trying to bog them down and get them out of the fight. So it's pretty cool. And obviously drag back Slayers and Slayers. They're a must, right? Big dinosaurs, yet Slayers on. So, lovely. So, uh, my opponent here, you see he's got some Chameleon Skinks. I can't see these guys, they're stalked. He's going to try and use them to pick off my Slayers. So, always good to have some Skirmishers, though Chameleon Skinks are quite expensive. So, um, that is one thing. But then they can stalk, so he can kind of ambush me. There's, you know, there's pros and cons there. Um, also, he's got a load of Skink Cohorts, three in the front line, which will definitely help. Um, but the passing Charges will do a lot of damage to them. But they do have the Missile Resist, so against Rangers and Quarrelers and Handgunners, these guys are great. Great to have in the front, uh, but against Miners of Blasting Charges, it's not going to work out so well. So uh, Temple Guards in the back, obviously they're you know they're halberd infantry, they're anti-large, but they've just got such good combat stats and they're very sturdy. 85 armor, um, you know they got shields as well as the halberds. They've got a load of armor piercing. They're pretty they're pretty formidable, very hard to take down. So this is going to really anchor his line for a long time and let these guys get in the back. So he's got Cold One Riders. Cold One Riders don't rampage um, like the um, you know the Cold Ones do for the Dark Elves. Uh, the Riders do keep him under control, which is awesome, because uh, they've actually got quite a lot of armor piercing, so they're pretty formidable. On the charge, they will hit a lot, and, uh, you know, they're pretty armored themselves. They're going to be pretty useful, so I like that. And, uh, yeah, that's, uh, oh, he's got Krokgar, obviously. There you go, big dinosaur, so that's great. Um, that'll be fun for me to kill. And also, he's got a Skink Priest, so he's just got um, uh, Curse of Midnight Wind uh, for all the debuffs, you know, big AoE debuffs, very useful, those, I think, armor and, oh, what else is it? I've forgotten now. I can't think off the top of my head. Um, yeah, armor and melee attack. So when my melee attack is as low as it is for the dwarves, that's really going to hurt me. Um, so that's pretty great. And also lowering the armor. That's always a good thing against dwarves too. But he's also got wind blast. So overcasted, that's going to do a lot of armor piercing damage and it's going to hurt like hell. So let's speed things up and see how it goes. So straight away, you can see uh, Chameleon Skinks. They're trying to get around the sides to try and get to my slayers. Good, cool. You want to kill as many slayers as possible. But Given his build, I'm not sure it even really matters. Um, I don't think he has to pick away at the Slayers, because he's gone mostly infantry, you know? He can use the Skinks to bog them down, and the Temple Guard, um, hopefully. 
Um, but, you know, I guess he does have a lot of, you know, cavalry that the Slayers are going to completely mince. So, you know, I guess there's that's useful. But um, I think he could just brought more skinks, or skinks with javelins or something, to, you know, skirt uh, skirt around and probe the back lines, force the Slayers to have to react. Because, um, yeah, I think these are a bit, bit pricey. But, you know, he did do some good early damage on the Slayers, so that definitely helps. Still at 60 models, though, but, you know, it's uh, it's helping. So here, I throw the Mines of Blasting Charges at them, just to keep them bogged down. They're going to try and throw Blasting Charges. Not going to do much, they're pretty spread out, but it's going to be a target over here that he's going to have to deal with. So uh, while he's off there, he could just shut them down quickly with all of his Cold One Riders, but um, I'm just going to march in, get into the fight before they can actually just, you know, take out one unit at a time. So um, here you can see Mines of Blasting Charges, throwing the charges, and look at the amount of damage they do. It's ridiculous. They've already paid for themselves. So here, Rune of Wrath and Ruin goes down the Temple Guard. It'll help whittle down their health over time, and it slows them down. So not getting to this engagement, so hopefully I'm able to wrap up the Skinks before they can back them up. So uh, here, my Slayer's still getting shot at, which is annoying. Skinks have run in to try and stop the Mines of Blasting Charges, but they're holding up pretty well. So uh, over here, I've got some Longbeards trying to hold the, um, you know, the Temple Guards in place here. There's two Temple Guards fighting them. Great Wind Blast does a ton of damage to my Miners, a fair bit to the Grumbling Guard, but I'm holding out pretty well. And here, you'll see that was pretty desperate last spell, because uh, this Gink Priest is getting beaten the hell out of. But, Krogar's running in, he's going to manage to disrupt these guys enough, there's enough Temple Guard around there, to uh, distract uh, Ungrim, so the Gink Priest gets out. So over here, you can see all the Cavalry running in, but I do have Slayers in here already. So that's really good, but my Longbeard is still holding under all this. Two years of Temple Guard and a charge from two Cold One Knights into the sides, and they're still going strong. So uh, obviously the uh, Iron Drakes, they've been shooting at Krokgar whenever they get the chance. Um, I think these ones are going to shoot into the Cavalry, because I want to shut them down nice and quickly. They are pretty flimsy to this kind of, uh, kind of attack. They will lose models very quickly and lose their effectiveness a lot. So uh, here you can see my Iron Drakes getting charged by the Chameleon Skinks, which is a good call. It stops them firing. And, uh, you know, the Chameleon Skinks aren't really going to get much damage done anyway, because all my Slayers are stuck in, you know, into these fights. So uh, here I'm going to throw the Mines of Blasting Charges into the Chameleon Skinks and pull the Iron Drakes out. These ones that are free at the moment are still firing at Krokgar, which is brilliant. And now I'm able to get my uh, Grumbling Guard into the back of these Temple Guard, which is definitely going to help me. And over here, these Miners, they managed to deal with some Skinks. They managed to chase off the Chameleon Skinks for a bit, and now they're fighting Cold One Riders. And they're actually doing okay in that fight. So, um, Mines of Blasting Charges, not to be sniffed at in this, uh, in this matchup, it's pretty great. So, uh, here I've got Ungrim and everyone's stuck in, trying to get some damage into these guys. Um, these, uh, Iron Drakes, they need to get out of there, all the Chameleon Skinks are running in here. But, um, I shoot at these Skink Cohorts just to try and do some more damage to them. I know it's not what they're for, but these guys are so haggard I thought maybe one volley would be enough to break them and I wouldn't have to worry about this from another side. But it didn't quite work out. But, the Iron Drakes with 120 armor, you know, 125 armor, the Skinks are gonna take a long time to try and damage them. And uh, here you can see Ungrim trying to go for the Skink Priest, but he's coming back. I think I'm also trying to shoot at it with the Iron Drakes just to finish him off. Because, uh, yeah, like a Wind Blast in here. I mean, look how dense all this is. Um, they could get a lot of work done in here. But I guess he does have cavalry in the back. Um, so, amazingly, these long beards, they've been fighting just all of the Cold One Riders and all of the Temple Guard. They are still fighting. It is incredible how long these guys last. They are great units. So uh, over here, my miners are coming back. Unfortunately, you know, they did fight the uh, cold ones for a bit too long. Once again, the Iron Drakes, they're turning around, shooting cavalry, or uh, I guess Krokgar in this case. So uh, here, the Thane drops the Tormentor Sword. So uh, suddenly, he's got minus 26% melee attack, so he's not going to be hitting as hard. And um, yeah, under the volley of all these guys, that is lethal. Ungrim comes in. I don't know if he manages to hit him in time. Nope. Tormentor Sword's worn off already and Krokgar's running away, which is really sad. I really want him dead. Um, so over here, Temple Guard still fighting these long beards and the uh, Runesmith, but we're getting through them eventually. And uh, here, another huge volley from the uh, uh, from the Iron Drakes, but he is actually managed to bob and weave a bit, so he did avoid most of those shots, but you've really got to avoid all of them. It does not take much. And uh, unfortunately, with Krokgar dead, uh, everything else just chatters immediately. They were all, you know, getting attacked in the rear, all surrounded, taking heavy damage. They all had very small health pools left, so leadership across the board for the Lizardmen was very low. Nothing was going to break if Krokgar, you know, had survived. But as soon as he died, they got that last debuff, which put them under, you know, their required leadership to, uh, you know, keep fighting. So it's pretty textbook. Um, I think Iron Drakes are just the best against Lizardmen. They're just so formidable. They are so hard to kill uh, with anything that can get to them quickly. 
uh, which is amazing. Um, I think uh, if he'd resorted to his cavalry, you know, to get on top of them. The fact is, these cold one riders just melt under pressure from the uh, from the slayers, and they would have blocked a load of shots with the chameleon skinks. So it's not like the chameleon skinks could have shot at the slayers while these guys charged it. it it's really rough. This basically covers all ground. Even if they go wide with a lot of skinks, the miners are blasting charges. You saw how much damage they did, and the amount of armor on the long beards. They're going to sit and fight skinks for years. So even if he went really wide, it would have been really hard to penetrate this. So um, this base just has all the tools you need for dealing with uh, Lizardmen. You know, if he'd gone with heavier, with the big dinos, I think he would have got bogged down. And even cheap infantry like miners would get good value with their armor piercing. And, uh, you know, Ungrim would just be hunting them down one after another. Um, the Slayers would be having a field day. And most of all, these Iron Drakes, just one big volley from each of them. And, you know, any dinosaur is going to be in real trouble. I mean, you saw Krokgar's health just just plummet downwards. Um, it's pretty crazy. It's pretty formidable. So, um, yeah, I really like this build. This is a fun one. And uh, the ODM guys, they are no pushovers. They uh, they know what they're doing. Um, yeah, mostly tournament players, the ODM lot. I think they all might be, but they're all brilliant. So um, I was very, uh, very chuffed to have won this. Um, it's a bit unconventional, um, this build, I think. You know, the Temple Guards... You're missing out there with the anti-large, but still, they're the toughest frontline fighters, you know? They're going to hold the most. Um, I mean, you saw that. 92 kills, 66, 48, and these guys are under a lot of pressure. So, um, it's pretty great. They did uh, they did pretty formidably. So, probably a good call. But, man, like, it was, it was rough. It's a rough fight for the Lizardmen against the Dwarves, I feel. Um, you could bring cannons, but cannon crews are going to die too quickly, you know? That's what makes the Iron Drake so great. They just can't get killed too quickly, because they've got 125 armor. So, um, yeah, fantastic. And you can't just abandon the cannons, you know, and run away, because then the cannons aren't firing. So, you save the crew, you lose the cannons. These guys, they just run along with their artillery, and it doesn't matter. So, it's pretty great. So, uh, I think these guys definitely MVPs. I mean, uh, you're not really going to get outranged by the Lizardmen. Lizardmen don't have a lot of long-range stuff. So, um, you know, just let them come to you and just hit them hard with Iron Drakes. I think that's the way to do it. So, guys, if you enjoyed this, please do comment, like, and subscribe, and uh, happy Easter, everybody.